You, you're finally awake. The other day, I was doing my yearly Skyrim playthrough, when I stumbled upon the many mines across the game. But this one had some ebony ingots, so obviously I thought, let me snag those. That was, until I heard the game inform me, I didn't have a pickaxe. And that's when I thought to myself, have I ever had a pickaxe? let alone mind anything with it. What about a notch pickaxe, seeing as it's the big easter egg of the game? Then my two brain cells sparked something. Re-released a billion times, weird creators, and you play it once a year for two weeks. They're the same game, and I wanted to see if I could make them the slightest bit similar. So today, I tried to see if I could beat Skyrim. Minecraft Steve. The rules are pretty simple. I can only use gear I craft and I can only deal damages with pickaxes. I know swords and axes and shit exist in Minecraft but if I just use them it would remove any and all interest from the challenge. Two little things to keep in mind as well are I'll try to do smitting related quests as I come across them and I'll try to use the notch pickaxe. But these aren't actually rules, just fun little additions. So with that, let's get started. I played the classic Skyrim intro for a gazillion time, then got to creating Steve, and to be honest, I think I did a damn fine job. Normally I suck at character creation, but I did well here. After this I just did the usual, sprinted through Helgen, Letting Hadfar do everything because I didn't have a pickaxe yet. And then the second I got out of that cave, I dashed to Ember Shard Mines. Now everyone goes here to jump these bandits on the average playthrough. But I was here for something extremely specific. There's actually a pickaxe here. So after picking it up, I finally got to work clearing it out. I picked up some iron while I was here, because I knew that later on, that armour would become a big part of this adventure. And immediately using that iron picked up and making my way down to Riverwood, I crafted my first pieces of armour in the game. After this I did a very well known exploit. I went to Fendel, got him as a companion, and started spamming archery training. I wanted to do this because the pickaxe is not a good weapon. It's one of the lowest damaging weapons in the game, and it's nowhere near as fast as a dagger. So I knew I'd need the perk very early on if I wanted any chance against the dragon coming up. I then got unbelievably lucky as I was able to obtain a second pickaxe from Valerius. I had been looking for a second one since I began, as I knew do wielding would be the only way to make the pickaxe a viable weapon. This is when I unfortunately realised that I had lost the clip of me killing the very first dragon. I had also crafted some new gear so I decided to show it off to ensure that I had beaten him. To summarise the dragon fight it was very long and very frustrating. It was mainly me letting the guards take pot shots as I ran up behind them and did a double heavy attack which did most of the work. For my levels, I mainly invested in one handed with do wheel perk tree and also bleed. I mainly wanted bleed for the harder boss fights coming up, like the first time you fight Aluin and the fight against Soon. Because I was worried without a uh, damage over time effect, he would kick my ass, as he's definitely the hardest fight in the main story. On top of that, I invested a lot in smitting because I wanted at least decent heavy armor by the time I got to the end of the game. I then decided to do some preparing for the later parts of the game. I went into a cave, I can't quite remember the name, I killed everyone. There I found a transmute book, 
that let me turn silver into gold, which would be extremely useful for that level. I then encountered some Talmer jumping a Stormcloak soldier, so I decided to get some payback from my boy. And finally then, I decided to get Amran's family sword, to get a free level in one hand and some free experience in one. I did a good chunk more of grinding to get my smithing up to a more respectable level. I mainly used Erling Greymaid at the Skyforge with the companions to level up my smithing, and then I run down to a one-handed trainer in Whiterun itself to level me up so I could get more training and create more ore. I mainly did this to try to get to level 30 so I could upgrade to Elven Armor, because at this point I decided to go with Light Armor instead to make my pickaxes have more stamina to do the two-handed hits more often. I then finally decided to do a bit of catch up on the story. I met up with Delphine and we decided to prove that I am Dragonborn. So I went and fought the first dragon that Aldun himself raised up from the grave. See, this fight usually isn't too bad. Delphine does most of the distraction and you can usually kick his ass before any difficulty comes in. The problem here is I do exactly minus 4 damage per second. So. Delphine has to take on a lot of damage before I could do anything. I think all in all, she had downed two fights during this, which normally she's never downed once. The fight really wasn't too bad, but it was a very ominous precursor of what is to come later, especially for Alduin's first fight. On the way back, I encountered a very welcoming walking Kashyyyk. He was um, flying for some reason. But I didn't really question it too bad. I then proceeded to run, route run to my destination, which was a small cave and located via the companion's quest. See, I wanted to come here because I know it usually has an enchanted table, and I wanted to get some of those enchantments on my pickaxes as soon as possible. Unfortunately, when I got to said cave, there was a little vampire there waiting for me, and she kicked my ass. It was four times until I was finally able to put her down. Then, I went up and jumped the Master Vampire. Unfortunately for me, the enchantment rewards I got weren't anything good, and all I could put on my weapon was Soul Trap, which wasn't really useful this early. I did need a complete 180 away from the story, and decided to do the Lost of the Ages, as it's one of the only major smitting related quests in the game. I met Katria, and pretty cannot suck as bad as she did, and get the quest done. The enemies in here were a tad bit difficult, such as the spiders and spears, but useful, as they often contain both soul gems and scrap metal. I could turn into those minions. I then got stuck fighting blind, naked hope for a while, as they, like me, had realized the overwhelming strength and damage over time effects. Then came the blues. At first, I was considering trying to crouch up there to get it, but I decided it would be fine to use the bow just in this case, as I wasn't actually attacking anybody. I got to the area to find my crown, and a bunch of scrap metal which would be very useful later. I then went all the way back to Whiterun and crafted it all up into beautiful, nice dwarven metal ingots. I then, finally, after so long, met a decent fit as well as a backpack which has become customary for every single playthrough I do, as it's so easy to craft and has massive benefits. But with that, the Dwarven Armour had finally been crafted, and I was dripped out, so now my endgame armour was complete. Notice here how I stored all my items in this barrel. See, I assumed that they'd be safe to have for later. I was wrong. Every single ingot I put in here would be gone later on in the playthrough. I then made it back to Delphine, where she had taught me that she had been listening to some Kanye West podcasts and thought that the Talmud were now in control of the media and tasked me to go get it. So, I met with her associate, gave him all of my good shit to keep, threatened his life if he lost them on me, and made my way into the Talmud embassy. Once I got inside, I decided to get my stuff back and tried to stealth through, but was almost immediately spotted. Yeah. 
I managed to get the proof that the Talmer control Hollywood, and by proof I mean a Twitter thread. I even managed to save Delphine's informant. Well, I did save him. Technically. But that was only until he pissed me off. I immediately booked it out of there and back to Delphine, where I informed her that Arnold, or whatever the fuck his name is, is still alive, and he just got sick of her shit, much like I have. I hid the enchantment table to upgrade some of my shit, and finally, after all this time, I managed to put a decent enchantment on my weapon. This is a major buff. No, it's an extra 10 points of damage, doubling what I could previously do. Frost may have been the worst type of enchantment to put on my weapon, but it was still good. After that, I created Vegetable Soup, which gave me near infinite stamina for power attacks. I did this as two-handed power attacks are the strongest thing you can do with dual wheel weapons. After this, I headed to the right way and tried out my new Frost pickaxe, and the damage was very much noticeable. I then convinced Esmeralda to finally come out of his gamer hole and help with the Dragon Rebellion. Edson Barbos informs of his plan that everything we could learn will be on just a big ass wall. As I made my way to the sanctuary, I encountered this fucking Lord of the Rings battle. Holy shit. Really cool. Then I got nuked by a fucking flame astronaut, which wasn't as pleasant as watching the battle from a distance. After that, I made it to the troll of the world to speak with Alduin. I ignored him completely and went straight for the real prize. No, not the Ebony Ore. The actual prize. The Notch Pickaxe. Is it good? Not really. But is it why I did this challenge? Yes. So I was so very, very excited to have it. Me and Pirate Nox got very intimate, which I was had bit uncomfortable with and he gave me a nice new little shout and told me exactly what I need to get an Elder Scroll ah, ah, he said it he said it normally there's a whole quest to track down where the Elder Scroll is but as I played the game a billion times I know Septimus Sigma sadly so I sprinted straight to his gaff and got it well I didn't actually get it I just got the location of it in a nice big cave I felt immensely guilty after killing a fellow schoomer like myself. It really hurts to kill your own kind. I then got absolutely jumped by another group of blind old men. Like, these guys kicked my fucking ass. There's no other way to put it. This place, in general, was definitely one of the harder difficulty spikes in the entire run. Maybe the hardest, actually. The amount of deaths I had here, where I just could not do anything except spam healing potions, was frankly ridiculous. But eventually, eventually I cleared him through. I then got to my first big opponent, the Centurion. But surprisingly, it wasn't very difficult. Normally this guy kicks my ass, but I just kind of circled around him hooked his legs and smacked him in the arse. I then got to the most beautiful place in the entire game, Blackreach. But can we talk for a second how actually shit this is as a location? Like in terms of looks, it is stunning. It is beautiful, but there is just nothing to do. Not to mention how much higher a level everything is than you. Most things will one-shot you here, even though you come to the story around the level I was at. But, oh my god, there is like three things to do here, and none of them are interesting. I then did a quick bit of enchanting on my gear, mainly focusing in one-handed damage. As previously mentioned multiple times, the pickaxe has a laughable amount of damage. So anything to bump that up a little would be greatly appreciated. I then made it to that nice little vault that the Elder Scrolls kept in and did what I usually do. Spam buttons until I finally got it. And with that, I was out of there. 
I then started another quest called Unfathomable Depths, which is a big smitting related quest about getting a book that will help you improve it. But to be honest, I had never done this quest before. I only knew it because I looked up quests related to do with smitting. So I was very excited to do it, and to be honest, it's pretty interesting. It's about following the ghosts of five people as they went down and explored this tunnel and seeing what went wrong in this expedition and what made them die. It was just the usual Dwemer ruins, like most of Skyrim, but at least the layout was a bit different. So I honestly thought this was a pretty fun and it was a unique change of pace. I didn't know a challenge run could introduce me to something brand new. I then had to fight another Centaurian, but to be honest, I'll just let the full clip play out. You know, it was here when I realized that my build was actually decent. I killed this guy so easily. And it made me realize that no matter how shit the weapon is, with enchantments and Skyrim, you can really become a force of nature. When I first started this, I was thinking of not doing enchantments, and I realized, hey, Sharpness 5 exists. At this point, I put the lexicon in it to complete the quest fully, and that's when I got it, my new magic, Ancient Knowledge. I was very happy to get this, as it increases Dwarven Armor Armor rating, and like, I was already using all that. It just it was a free 25% armor increase, which is a substantial amount. So with that, my build was pretty much complete. After much preparation and a lot of health potion bought, I headed back up to the troll of the world and started my battle with that one. Well see, this fight is usually the hardest fight in the game especially if you're only dealing with frost damage which at this point i mostly still was but it surprisingly wasn't too bad maybe it's because of my absolute stock on health potions but i was mostly grand the pickaxe did just enough damage to keep them hurt and the bleed really came in useful so after a while of swinging and a lot of whiff shouts to bring him down, I ended the fight. I hit a quick little tea bag at the end as the coolest fireball of all time landed during it. And the first fight with Alduin and the biggest hurdle in the game was surprisingly cleared on my very first attempt. I then finished up one of my favourite quests in the game, Lost to the Ages, as I knew I was approaching the end of the game and this was the final smitting related quest I wanted to get to. I then went to the weird spinning globe circle dwarven bullshit thing to raise up the platform and make it inside the cave. I entered in it and immediately had to get to work fighting off the dwarven spears and little bullshit. Honestly, this might be my favourite quest in the entire game. Obviously it was introduced in the Dawnguard DLC so you can't really credit to the base game but I absolutely love this quest. It has a really interesting character in Katria, really good loot rewards both being her bow and the crown that gives you a second standing stone and has my personal favourite boss in the entire game, the Fort Bastard. And when I tell you he kicked my fucking tea and holy shit. I had become woefully unprepared from using all my health potions against Alduin, so this guy was just fucking me up. I took one of my biggest L's that I've ever taken in this entire game. You're just about to see it. I was on one health and so was he. Just before I managed to land with killing blow, he fucking stepped on my head brutalizingly. It was rough. And, but I finally did it with the bleed and the double swing becoming very useful. And I finally crafted one of the best items in the game the Arterial Crown. This is basically Skyrim's version of getting Netherite. I then recreated this meme with Balgruff 
and convince him to let me put a dragon in his thing as long as I convince everyone. So then I talked to Joe Biden, the British Empire, and finally your racist uncle that your mother doesn't like you talking about. And then the council began. Shrek! Fiona! Fiona! Mom! Harold! Duncan! After a meeting, I then convinced the giant lizard that he actually had Stockholm Syndrome and was deeply in love with me. He then proceeded to bring me a skull dolphin. Now see, this is the final area of the game, so nothing I do here really matters. So I decided to do what I do for most of it, which is sprint through at full speed, ignoring all enemies behind me. I then encountered the green goblin, and to be honest, I just jumped this guy. It was actually sad. I just ran up on him before he could even pick up his little staff and beat him to death. Got him in a corner by the end, just swinging away. I then hopped straight into Southern Guard, one of the prettiest locations in the game. I then encountered the actual final boss of the game, soon. And just like you expect, he absolutely fucked my shit up when I first fought him. He managed to take my ass down in four squeaks while I was trying to run away. So then, on my next attempt, I decided to just run directly at him and swing away. And somehow, that worked. I then entered the Hall of Heroes, talked to the Three Stooges to convince them to fight death in death. And then, I met Alduin. To be honest, this boss was as easy as expected. They had taken most of the damage and the attention, so I just swung away until he went down. Like always, super underwhelming. I then travelled all the way back to Paranax, and he congratulated me for completing my quest. And with that, I proved that you could beat Skyrim as Minecraft Steve. But there was one last way to end it. A way that most Minecraft playthroughs themselves end. I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time out to watch this video. It was a really fun thing to go through, as I had never used a pickaxe before, and I thoroughly enjoyed seeing what I could do with it. And, as I said at the very start, this was my annual two weeks of Skyrim. They got me super into it for it, and for that I am grateful, so I'll never miss the opportunity to play Skyrim a bit more. Even though Morrow went down and proved the narrow bit better. But anyway. I'd like to thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you all.